Robert Kirkman's AMC Secret, Secret History of Comics. <laughs> Thank you. And I was blessed enough to be an Eisner judge last year. Uh, for those who don't know, the Eisner's is the Academy Awards equivalent for comic books. So it I'm so honored to be up here today, and thank you all for waiting and being here on a Saturday. There are so many panels to choose from, and yet you guys are here. So thank you so much. Some of them are still making our way up here, so I'm going to just start off very quickly. How, uh, you guys had a good time? Did you guys have an easy time finding the north part of the building? Versus the thing? <laughs> it's been a while. Okay. So um, the first one we're going to do is... Selwyn Ward, how are you? You want to come on out? Selwyn! Everyone shouting your name! So, as we're waiting for a couple of talents, we had a press room right before this, I'm sure you guys are all very pleased. Mr. Walter Jones, how are you? We like to stick together. <laughs> so we're good. Mr. Andrew Gray, are you are you here right now? Scott Zilner, how are you? Come on out. <laughs> Mr. Dan Southworth, how are you? Kevin Thompson, how are you? I just want to say, during the press room, I for each other behind the scenes and sending them together, and then I just saw Andrew pull out the chair for Kevin, and I felt like they're such a family, and they were like, of course, dream work makes the teamwork, so I love the fact that you guys are just always together and always elevating each other. We just know how to behave in public. You should see us behind closed doors. We've been trained. I thought it was just that I was old. It doesn't count unless it's on the ground. So. <laughs> so I'm gonna allow them to quickly introduce themselves because I actually got several inboxes from people that said, we love Power Rangers, but my kids are so young and we just wanna come to the panel but we want to learn more about them. So some of them here are like seasoned veterans of the sh like they watched the show for over 30 years. And then there are some who are kind of new. So to kind of open up, tell us what ranger or character you played and who you wish you could have played. <laughs> my, my, my. Well, uh, I played uh, Zachary Taylor, the original Black Ranger. <laughs> Woo! Oh, yeah. Uh, the, the character I would like to have played is Zach Taylor, the original Black Ranger. That's it. Hi, my name's Kevin Thompson. I was Quagmire. I was the guest star of a two-parter. I wish I would. I would like to have played Quagmire much longer because. I saved you guys. They were not out of illusion. Out, out of illusion. But I was. They were not thinking straight. They could not get themselves um, together, and I did that. I myself is the reason why Power Rangers is still going to get. <laughs> My name is Andrew Gray. I played the legendary Troy Burrows. I would have liked to have played. Maybe um, Brian Cranston's kind of Zordon character. Because he was the Red Ranger that got sucked in, right? 
He sacrificed himself, and that's what all heroes do. I'll cheer for that one. I was so in ward, I played TJ. I was red turbo in blue space. Yeah. And you know, I'm, I'm gonna say the same. I think I would've wanted to be TJ. Yeah. <laughs> Hello, I'm Dan Southworth. I play the Quantum Ranger, and Woo. I'm pretty happy with that. Yeah. <laughs> and so, Scott, well, this question doesn't really pertain to you, but I get multiple people who either recognize you at Power Morphin Con, or they ask me, does he own the official con you know, convention? Was he the founder? Tell me about this man. So very quickly, for those who don't know your connection to the official one. Gotcha. But to answer that first question, uh, <laughs> I would like to play Dan. <laughs> Um, I, I, I run the official Power Ranger convention, Power Morphicon. Yeah. Yeah. <laughs> and that's a, a, a fan-driven event uh, for everyone that loves Power Rangers, and we make, you know, one weekend every two years uh, the, uh, the nirvana of Power Rangers. Everybody comes out, everybody has a great time, and that's why we're doing it. So... Scott's convention is extremely well received and very popular, which is actually is a testament to the fandom. So whoever can go first, why do you think this entire franchise has lasted so many decades and is so popular and is still well loved today and will continue to be so? The world needs more heroes. Woo! I think it's the passion of the fans of you liked it as a child, you've moved on and you've your children then from that, like that, you, you, know, you liked Walter, and now you like Andrew, and there's, and there's, just keeps going on. And who's gonna say it? Come on guys. I was gonna say diversity, inclusion, you know, being able to be a child and be able to, you know, relate to characters with so many options because of all the fans, you know. Uh, yeah, I think it's the, um, it's a powerful, symbol for what you can accomplish when you stay interconnected with one another and you're inclusive inclusive that's that's it it's um i think it's it's about the positivity aspect you know it's about um wanting to be the best that you can be and wanting to uh inspire others to be good you know it's about good against bad and and you know about uh Loving other people so much that you wanna you, you put yourself in front of people to to, to help them be a hero. You know, you know, I have to just say this because uh, it's so true. You know, in life, when we act as an individual, we get pretty far in life. But what as I've learned with Power Rangers is when we work together as a team, we go further. Absolutely. And we get to be with each other through the ups and the downs and we get to realize how similar we are than how different we are. And we couldn't do what we do without the support from all of you. And um, I know I'm saying it for everybody, thank you, and we love you guys. Woo! Yeah, we have the best fans in the world. You guys are amazing. And like, you know, I, I started the show in 19, well, we did the pilot in 1992. And then in 93, we started the show, and it was, it was nothing until, you know, the first week we became the number one kids show in the world, which is crazy to be the number one kids show in the world in 40 countries and over 80 languages. But all of that continues today because of you guys. You guys are the fans. You guys have taken the show and shown it to your kids and shared it with your families and your friends. And um, it's a testament to you guys because we wouldn't be here without you. So yes, thank you all. Woo! And Scott, they spoke about all these values that a lot of people, you know, and children and families have grown up. How do you see that reflected in the fandom when they go to your convention? Well, it, it, it's 30 years of Power Rangers. So think about it like high school. When you started as a freshman, there was several years above you. And then as you went through high school, it's several years behind you. Power Rangers is Angel Grove High for 30 years. We got Walter there from year one, and then we got, you know, the newest season out there right now, Dino 
Uh, we got uh, Cosmic Fury, Dino Fury. It's every year is another generation of fandom and everyone has their favorites. We all know it's Walter. But um, <laughs> it's, it's something you can't let go and there's so many generations of it. It holds true class after class of Angel Grove. Yeah. And so and so, a lot of people looked you up and then they asked me and they said he was invited to Comic Con Africa. That's the information that they got off of, mm -hmm. I guess, Google.com or those who actually met you there. When you were on the show, did you think you were going to be invited to a convention like that one day because everyone saw you on TV and they were like, this is amazing, we want to just invite them to something like this? No, never in my wildest dreams would I have thought that. But I will say I got invited. I didn't make it, but I'm still trying to go. Oh. <laughs> it got canceled. I guess they had rolling blackouts and some te technical difficulties at that time. So I'm glad I get that. But you were invited, meaning they seeked you out. Yes, 100%. Yeah. I actually have several friends in the black community goes, you know what? He was being called home. And they wanted him to come back, and they were so happy, and they were like, we hope. <laughs> you know, like he's. He's here, and I was like, oh, that's great. <laughs> so, Dan, one of the questions that I get is, how do you, they, they look you up, they already know the character you played in the history, they're like, oh, he's an actual martial artist. Like, it is everywhere. Was that one of the requirements to get the job? And I've been asked by two ladies, how do you keep fit? <laughs> um, I keep moving, that's how I keep fit. Um, I started out, I screen tested originally when they were recasting the show. Um, then I decided to move to Los Angeles uh, after I screen tested for a TV show. I, I didn't know anything about how the industry works. And I uh, was cast in the live show tour that toured the world with MCA. It was pretty fancy. And as a result of that, I ended up getting hired by corporate headquarters to do appearances and then found my way into stunts, doing action. And that all came on the heels of having just finished uh, acquiring my black belt uh, before I moved down, and I, you know, I wrestled. And I grew up the only Asian kid on my block and had to learn to protect myself, I was told. And then I did, and then it came in hand. Um, but, uh, so that was there before I got onto the show as an actor. And then I was finally hired onto the show as an actor after serving on it for two weeks as a stunt person, as a stunt performer. Um, and I think because they knew of my background as a martial artist and because of my background as a stunt man, they, they, they gave me a lot more activity, it felt like. And I was encouraged to do a, little, a lot more of whatever I could do. Uh, and that was nice. And so, less of a prerequisite and more of a situation of circumstances in my case. Uh, Andrew, people asked me this question because they assume that we already know each other, but we actually met at this convention. They're like, ask him which one of his two ranger outfits he liked the most. Ask him that. Do you have one? It's hard because they both fit me so well. <laughs> <laughs> But I would say the Mega Force, because as a kid growing up, I shared this in interviews just earlier that I wrote a time capsule that when I grew up I wanted to be the Red Power Ranger or funny like Jim Carrey, and I'm halfway there I feel like now. But uh, when I got to put on that suit, I, it was a very emotional experience. I feel like maybe even for that for everybody, it was an emotional experience, and I, I didn't really believe it until we, we were wrapped. And I was like. Did that just happen or am I dreaming? And it happened, so I um, definitely make a force for me for sure. And then we weren't told that the, the, the suits were gonna change in the second season. And I wasn't really into it. And I tell fans that they're like, why? I'm like, because we went from like a mega blaster to like a pirate gun. <laughs> like I gotta like put gunpowder in this thing? Like what are we gonna do here? He's like, yeah, but you get to morph into all the Red Rangers with keys. I'm like, wait a second. And so that was, that was fun to, to know that, but it was, it was a mega force for sure. So you know there's definite answers for those who've always wondered. 
which one that you like the most. So, so when, when I was speaking to some journalists, they started arguing, they're like, no, it's red versus blue. It's red versus blue. Who did you prefer? You know, uh, I would have to say red, but you know, it's not for what you think. It's actually just because that's my first experience. It's almost like when you get your first bicycle. You know, it has that sentimental value. And uh, Turbo as a series, I just, it's, it's kind of old school. You know, it's still kind of quick cuts. You know, quality wasn't so good. It almost reminds me of like the old school Kung Fu, you know, when their mouths don't quite line up and their hands sound like sticks. So I kind of like that piece. And it just, it's, it's just, it was my introduction. So I definitely had to say red. And Kevin, you, I think what I find so amazing about really popular franchises, you can play any role in any capacity, and the fans are going to remember exactly who you are, moments from that episode, and everything. When you got that role, and even to this day, did you think that you were going to be so loved and remembered for the, the two-parter? Because kind of like Star Wars, you, you could be a background character, and someone's like, I, I know it's Babu Frick. He was in it for three minutes, and we love him. And it mattered, and all characters are like that in the Power Rangers franchise. What is it like knowing that you're still recognized? Really amazing that it was just a two week job that 30 years later people remember me. Um, people have said, you know, thank you for playing the character you, you played. Uh, you saved me. I was like, it was just a character, but their life was so a wreck and Power Rangers as a franchise. And I was OG, so we are just coming out realizing, still, we didn't realize it, this was gonna be 30 years later, but Power Rangers was something that they could watch on TV and take all the daily problems away from them because the Power Rangers were gonna get it done and it's you know 30 years later you never you really as an actor you're just it's almost like a construction worker you build a house great 30 years later you don't know if it's still going to be there i was lucky enough to also be in star wars that is still you know 40 years later return of the jedi was there so we're celebrating that. That's amazing. Did I think that I would be up here on the table talking about these things? No. I was just hoping that you know people would remember it. I'm an, I'm an old man telling old stories that people want to listen to. Mm -hmm. And I'm very, very lucky for that. Thank you. Walter, I have been doing panels and press for over a decade. And whenever you ask, you know, people of ethnic minority backgrounds, who was the first time you saw on live action that you felt like, I could be that person, I could be that character. They're always like, Black Ranger, original Mighty Morphin Power Ranger. What is that like for you when you hear something like that, that you were kind of the one that they felt pioneered their way and made them feel safe entering deeper and deeper into fandom? Um, it's, it's incredible. It's, um, I think everybody wants to have left a mark, you know, in the world in some way. And, um, you know, I, I realized when I was doing the show, I think, I was like, I think I'm the first black superhero on live action TV. And I was like, is that real? Is that something that's real? I think I am. And, here it is 30 years later, and then I was. I was the first, I mean, I wasn't the first black superhero. Obviously, there were more, but on live action TV, and for it to be done in such a way that it was there, I was there every day. I was, you know, every day after school, Monday through Friday was on, and eventually it was Monday through Saturday. So, um, and for the show to be so widely watched worldwide in 40 countries, um, that's a lot of inspiration. That's a lot of people that were inspired uh, or that were inspired to accept diversity and um, to then a big part of that makes makes me really happy. Yeah. Yeah. Woo! And 
And, you know, Walter, we're going to start with you and then we're going to go on our way down. A lot of people obviously mention the live action, but they'll also say, you know, the IDW comic books are really good, or I love the costume, and it actually grows beyond the live action medium into other types of medium as well. It, you had a film, you have comic books, you have toys. Why do you think that is? Because not every franchise is gonna have toys made out of them, have comic books that continue or make new stories about them. They may not get a film or films. What is it that you feel about the Power Ranger franchise that can expand? beyond its original format? Um, it's variety. I mean, like, in 30 years, there have been so many different iterations of Power Rangers. We have our own uh, multiverse. So, um, you know, it, there's there's something for everybody. If you started with Mighty Morphin, and you watched the show, and you got inspired by the show, and then it changed to, like, all the different versions, it was like, um, it, it takes you to a new fantasy. It allows you to to go to a different place. And the fact that we have action figures, pops, comic books, I mean, all these things are just another way for you to, to get lost in the lore of Power Rangers. So, it's awesome. It also helps to have an owner that's a toy company. <laughs> <laughs> um, or we're gonna let everyone jump in on this oh, one. Oh, no, we don't. I think Scott's the pro. And, and, and uh, having Scott, action figures Scott. made of you, or having action figures made of Power Rangers, the original action figures for Power Rangers were just simply the Japanese figures repackaged and thrown over here. And sometimes they would even do that wrong. Like they would still have the Japanese chips in them on the very first wave. They didn't fix everything. The very first mold of me had breasts. <laughs> <laughs> Isn't that not still true? Inclusive. <laughs> Don't act like you're not impressed. It, it, it was a. Uh, it, Bandai got the license because it was literally nothing. Nobody expected Power Rangers to be the number one kid show for 30 years. It, it wasn't something that was supposed to happen. The actors didn't unpack. They thought they were they weren't going to get the job. Wasn't going to go anywhere. And the fact that toys sold beyond amazing, they had to go back and do second, third, fourth, fifth prints on molds that they were gonna throw away because they were done with them. Um, it literally redid toys and it took Star Wars toys quite a long time to actually beat back their record of being the number one toys uh, line because Power Rangers owned it for a long, long time. I've heard executives reference uh, Walter's seasons that Walter was on as the phenomenon. Yeah, no, exactly absolutely. Exactly because of what you're saying. It was, it, they had never seen that many people rush to buy toys. Mm -hmm. And in fact, we have a toy market that we do now is partially responsible because of Power Ranger toys sold so well that there's new rules on how you get royalties on toys is because Power Ranger toys were beyond a phenomenon. It changed the toy world and how you produce toys for television shows. Yeah. And following close on the heels of that, we got brand after brand trying to replicate the success of Power Rangers that nobody, even to this day, still can from those original days of Power Rangers. It's crazy that the toys actually sold before the show even came out. So I was walking down Venice Beach one day with uh, my cousin, and these kids ran up on me, this is like two weeks before the show had aired, these kids ran up on me and said, hey, yo, you're, you're the Black Ranger, right? I was like, uh, yeah, but how do you know? The show hasn't even come out yet. It was like, I just bought your toy, and your, your face is on the box. <laughs> now, I didn't know that we had a toy. I didn't even know that, you know, we had taken pictures and they had, put him on a box of a toy. So I was like, I have a toy? And they're like, yeah, you got an action figure. I was like, I got an action figure? They're like, yeah, yeah your face is on the box. So I look at my cousin, I'm like, I have an action figure and my face is on the box. <laughs> and he's like, you got an action figure, your face is on the box. <laughs> it was pretty amazing. And I, even today when I see that, that first action figure with my little picture on the bottom, I'm like, this is, 
I got a toy, my face is on the bottom. That's pretty cool. Um, and that, that started even before Power Rangers in. Anybody want a Quagmire toy? Yeah. Woo! We made a Quagmire toy. Maybe we could go pop. Yeah. Even my Ewoks didn't make didn't make it because I did all the crazy stuff. I don't even have an Ewok. Well, I do. It was a Kmart one. Kmart's gone. So maybe we could do another Ewok one. Maybe an Ewok Quagmire. <laughs> you can't, never say never about a Quagmire toy. You never know. <laughs> so, and we're going to open up for questions. Um, I do not know due to the light where the microphone is. Ah, yes, the lovely person in the back waving. If you have a question, please line up. We're going to limit it to one question. No comments, please. And a lot of you are dying to ask about once and always. We, it's a no spoiler panel, so please do not ask that question. <laughs> 